All right. Hey, guys. I am Brooke Whitlow. I teach technology at East Hard Middle School. And today we have a real treat for you. We're going to teach the most fabulous students at Lakewood Elementary how to program on Scratch. And my wonderful teacher today is Sebastian. He's an eighth grader and he is a programmer extraordinaire. Um, and so first, I just want to kind of introduce myself to you guys. I know we've been back and forth with some students at Lakewood. And I just want you guys at Lakewood to know how programming got started at East. Um, last year actually was my first year teaching technology and I gave a survey to some of my students and asked them what they wanted to learn about in technology. And several students said they wanted to learn how to make video games and they wanted to learn how to program, which was completely outside of my comfort zone. I know Ms. Chenault, you can probably agree with me on that one. Um, and so at KISTE this year, which is a technology conference for teachers, actually last year, um, I sort of made it my mission to learn about it. And one of the programs that kept popping up was the program that we are about to use today, which is Scratch. Um, this is a program that was designed by MIT, which is a technical college, um, really, really good technical college. And so we sort of together, um, Sebastian and other students at East Harden and myself, we sort of started learning Scratch together and it sort of evolved. And here in a minute, I'm going to let Sebastian actually show you guys some of the computer games that he's created. Um, so I'm going to let um, Sebastian introduce himself. So uh, my name is Sebastian. Uh, I really like to program. I got started in about sixth grade when Ms. Rodo introduced it to us, and I just really liked it, so I continued it for years after here. All right. I mean, yes, yeah, seventh yeah. grade is my guy. So, yeah. Um, and I'm going to let him show you his game here in just a minute, um, or maybe at the end once we finish. It's a really, really awesome game. See, we have a visitor, Mr. Kopp. Can you hear me, Brooke? Yes, you are good to go. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for letting me take part in this. I'm awfully glad uh, to be here and to uh, get to see all you guys. This is a uh, this is really awesome. You know, computer science and what you're doing there. One of the most important things we can do in the school district. Um, by the way, I'm the associate superintendent for instruction here in Harn County Schools. So uh, great to be here and uh, thanks for having me. I can't wait to see what you uh, you guys have going on. Thank you for popping in. I think it's great, too, that um, we are starting programming in Hardin County at the middle school level and even at the elementary school level. So I only um, see big things happening from us with computer science and our students over at Lakewood. I know they're going to be doing big things. So thank you for popping in. Sure, thank you. This is awesome. Ms. Chanel, I'm going to go ahead and present your screen to everybody. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and how you got started and what we're doing and your thoughts on what we're doing today. Awesome. Sounds great. Uh, I am a fourth grade teacher here at Lakewood. Uh, my name is Jamie Chenault and I have uh, about 25 eager students uh, to learn about all this coding and programming and uh, I'm super excited <coughs> to learn it as well. Uh, I kind of expressed interest to Brooke and um, so we just kind of teamed up and this thing was born so we are uh, super excited and um, I know the kids are excited as well they've been looking forward for it for three weeks they ask me every day when's that kid that code thing happen <laughs> so um, it's finally here and their little smiles uh, worth it all all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and screen share with you guys, and I am going to go ahead and introduce you to some of the basic concepts that we're going to talk about today, and then I'm going to let Sebastian sort of take off and be the teacher. Um, so I want you guys to tell me when you can see my screen. Chairs, if you're still in the building, would you please call the office? Chairs, please call the office. Now we can. Good. Okay. All right. So, do you see me moving around over here? Are yeah. you good? Okay. Excellent. All right. So, what you guys have pulled up on your screen, and if you guys want to follow along with me, you are looking at the Scratch desktop. You've got several windows here that you're going to be working with. Um, this window up here is sort of like your preview window. So, when you when you try some programming and when you're trying to get your your characters to move around, this is going to be where you test it out. 
So do you, can you guys find the little green flag up at the top for me? Yes. All right, if you will take your little mouse and hover your mouse over the green flag, you're going to see him change colors, okay? You guys see how that happens? Yes. Okay, that's sort of like your green flag. Think of it like a race. When you click the green flag, that's when your programming is going to start. But we don't have anything programmed, so there's not going to be any action yet, okay? So if you can follow my mouse, this screen over here that I'm wiggling my mouse on is called your stage. Um, this is where you're going to program all your different characters, okay? So the blocks over here in the middle, these are your commands. Think of these like the directions that you're giving your characters. And you're going to be dragging these over onto your stage. That's going to be how you program, okay? Now, there is one vocabulary word that I'm going to have to show you today, so that way you can follow along when Sebastian starts talking, and that is your sprites. Now, your sprites down here, if you see the little cat moving around, these are the characters that you're going to use to program with. Um, and when we program, we call them sprites. So when you hear Sebastian here in a minute talk about sprites, this is what he's referring to, are these little characters, okay? Now, I, um, if you look up here in the middle where all your blocks are, you have motion, you have look, sound, pin, data, event, control, sensing, operators, and um, other things, okay? So they're all color-coded. So an easy way when Sebastian starts programming um, is you can kind of pay attention to the color that he's using. You can look up here in your menu and find that, okay? Are you following me? Are we good? Yeah. All right. Now, one thing that I do want to share with you guys and actually show you is the game that you guys are going to have made at the end of our day today. <coughs> now, um, we're going to have sprites. You can choose the different sprites that you want to use. You don't necessarily have to have what's on the screen. And Sebastian's going to show you the options that he has here in a second. But what you guys are going to have done, okay, there's a man talking. I don't know if you can hear him or not, so I don't want to try to holler over him. But what we're going to do, this witch is going to move back and forth, and we don't want our little crab to touch the witch. We want to get our crab over here to the key. Now, I know this is probably a little bit simpler than all your Xbox games and your computer games that you're playing, um, but this is a really great sort of game that is a good introduction to programming, okay? So I'll play this real quick and sort of let you see the, the point of what we're creating here. Let's play this game one more time. This time we win. Okay, do you guys get it? Yes. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, and also, when you guys finish today, if you want to go home and learn more and to keep programming, Scratch has lots of videos available for you to kind of watch and help. And honestly, Sebastian and I and some of the other students at East, when we first started learning how to program, we got on here and started watching a lot of the videos. Okay, So if you guys are interested, once you finish today, you can always go to Scratch's website and look for some of their videos. All right? Now, I'm going to turn it over to Sebastian, and I'm going to let him get started. Okay. Um, Sebastian is going to pull up his game that he has created, and hopefully you can see that. We'll see. Um, you didn't? Okay. So you guys didn't see the game with the crab then? No. Okay. Hang on. Let me try that one more time. I think I have got too many windows going over here, maybe, which is why you didn't see it. Let me try that again. Ah, what about now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Today, we'll make a game. Now, to win this game, we have to get the crab to the key without touching the witch. Okay. Now, do you guys get it? <laughs> So All right, so, so what we're going to create is we're going to have one sprite over here whose goal it is going to be to move over here to your key or whatever sprite you choose without touching the thing bouncing in the middle, okay? And Sebastian is going to teach you how to do that, all right? So I'm going to exit out of that for you, Sebastian. And you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Are you good to go? Yeah. All right, you're going to have to talk loud too, okay? Uh. Hey guys, I'm Sebastian, and I'm going to teach you how to make a game. Yeah. 
All right. So uh, first, on your screen, you should see a cat, and um, that's just pretty much where you start. So uh, if you want to, what you would like, if you want to change what your cat or your sprite looks like, you can go into the sort of gray bar at the top of your screen and find the picture of the scissors. You guys all good? Yes. All right, so what you're going to do is click on the scissors and then drag the scissors. It should have a picture of scissors. You're going to drag it over to the cat and click on it to get rid of it. And now you'd notice that there's no sprite on the screen. Yes. Is there? Is that on the no, screen? No, this is what they're saying. They're saying only this screen. All right. So are you guys good now? You have your yeah. camera gone? Yeah. So now what you're going to want to do is go from under the sort of preview box right here, and it should say new sprite. So what you're going to want to do is click the picture of the little character that that's right next to the word. So click on that and it should pop up a giant sort of uh, uh, what's it called? Um, a giant thing of characters that you can pick from. I don't know the word. But alright. So now that you have that up, just scroll through and, and uh, find a character that you want. And that's going to be your main character. They're going to try to get from point A to point B. All right? So go ahead and pick your characters. Let's pick quickly, please. Uh, I guess we'll do are you guys all good back there? Yes. All right. So everybody has their characters picked, right? Yes. So now what you're going to want to do is get the character that you pick, and you're going to want to drag it. You're going to click on him, and then drag him to the other side of the screen, just like that. All right. So after you're done with that, you're going to want to go into your little um, your sort of colors right here that has the words next to them. Then you're going to want to go to the brown events and click on it. And then after that, you should see a lot of sort of curvy rectangles, little curves on top. Uh, is everybody there? Yes. Yeah. I heard a no. Okay, if you can hang on, if you can give us like 30 seconds, that would be great. Alright, sure. Okay, we're ready. Hi, Miss Chanel, you just let us know whenever you're ready, okay? Okay, I will do so. Okay, am I correct in saying that their sprite should be on what uh, on the left hand side of the screen? Yes. Sorry, I was helping a student and didn't hear that direction. Oh, it's all right. All right, we look like we're ready to go. All right. So now what you're going to want to do is in your little color-coded uh, categories up here, 
You're going to want to click on events, the brown tab, right next to motion. All right. So when you're at, uh, at the events tab, you should see a lot of rectangles with curves on the top. And that means that you're in the right place. So now you're gonna wanna you're gonna look for the top one that says when flag clicked. <coughs> and it has the picture of the green flag in the middle. Oh, when flag is clicked. So this one. Wait, is this the stage? 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 Is this that's pretty much the main building block of your whole entire game. This is the most important thing you'll ever use in programming. So um, now what you're going to want to do is to make your sprite move, you're going to go to the, uh, the tab to the left of events, which is motion, and you're going to want to click on it. Which is it's the blue it's the dark blue tab. Dark blue tab. So has everybody got that now? Just yeah. Oh, all right. I probably kept you guys away. All right. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna find the top one in that category. And just drag it onto your stage. It should say move ten steps. So just drag it onto your stage. Notice he didn't connect it. And you're gonna have to hold on when you connect it. Don't connect it yet. I think I missed a step, so uh, don't connect it yet. Okay. So once you got that on your stage, not connected to anything, just by itself, you're going to want to go to the yellow tab that says control next to it and find the uh, for the yellow sort of block that says forever on it. The one that says forever. Now watch what he does with it. So now you're going to drag the forever block and connect it and just drag it and put it right next to the when lag clicked and then let go and it should be connected to the when clicked flag the when clicked block so has everybody got that done so far? Yes! All right. So um, after that, you're gonna want to find the block under forever that says if blank then, and then you're gonna want to put that. You're gonna want to drag it off of the little uh, category list. But he does with it. And then you're gonna want to put it in the middle 
you just drag your mouse into the middle of the um, of the forever block and just let go, and it should be sticking right in the middle of the forever block. <laughs> All right, so everybody has that done, right? Yes. All right, so to help me out, let's just whenever I tell you guys a step and you're done with it, just say say something. Say yes. <laughs> just say it, we're done or something. Yeah. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get that move 10 steps block from the just by itself and you're going to want to drag it right in the little space where it says if blank then alright so you don't have to say that anymore uh, we have another method so you're just going to want to drag it and put it in the middle of the if blank then yeah. <laughs> All right, so once you have that done, you're going to want to go to the tab, the light blue tab, that says Sensing, and you're going to want to click on it. So is, there, so is everybody in the light blue tab? Yes! Alright, so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to find the one that says key face pressed. Should be right here. Press. It says key space pressed. Key space pressed. Now I want you to leave it on the other place. The way he's doing it. And then drag that. You're gonna take it and drag it into in between if and then. So it's right above the ten steps. It should be a little space where it fits in. So just put it right there. Hopefully you guys can see on my screen what it's supposed to look like right now. All right, so now we pretty much have the ex the um, the most often used command that there is in Scratch. So now, if you notice, you go on your keyboard. No, first you have to click the green flag. So everybody, just click the green flag, and then when you press the space key, your sprite should start to move. So when he gets, the, if you press space, he just starts to walk around the screen. So now, to get him back to this other side, you just drag him to the other side. So now, you have a sprite that can move. So can everybody's sprite move now? Yes! Alright, that's great. That means you're doing it right. All right, so now we're going to be um, making a new sprite. So if you remember, you go to the bottom of your uh, stage and go to new sprite and click on the little head that there is right next to the words, and it should pop up this menu of characters again. And here, you're going to pick another object, or another sprite, 
that your character is trying to get. So, just like you saw in the video, the crab is trying to get to the key. So right now, you want to get your character right now to get something. So, um, just be quick and pick a sprite that your uh, your object, your character is going to get. So. Okay, we need to take it fairly quickly, please. All right. So does everybody have their um? Does everybody have their their second sprite on the screen? Yes. yes. All right. That's good. So now. There should be a little box around the little apple down at the bottom of your screen, right here. And now what you're going to do is you're going to drag the apple to the other, to the right-hand side of the screen. So just drag it to the right-hand side or whatever your second object is. It can be an apple. It can be anything. And that is going to be what your first <coughs> character is going to be trying to get throughout the game. So, once you have that all done, you're going to want to um, go to the, um, you're going to want to go to the, uh, the events tab, the brown tab that you were at originally. <laughs> So now do you guys have that? Yeah. So now you're going to come to the um, when I receive blank, when I receive message, right here. And you're going to drag it onto your stage. Just like that. Sebastian, can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, so we have a couple of kids that um, their initial sprite will not go back to the left side of their screen. Okay, yeah. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to drag your original sprite to the other side of the screen. Just get your mouse and drag it. We've done that, and it just keeps popping back to, like, the middle of the screen. Huh. Uh... Should we just keep trying? Uh, let's see. I don't... Try pressing the stop sign at the top of the screen. Maybe that'll work. All right. I think we got it. All right. You got it? Yep. So, uh, now let... Do you guys have your second sprite now? Yes. All right. So, um... Everything I said about the whole when I receive message, just uh, take that back. All right, just put it back, just drag it back, because I think I made a mistake. So when you're on your second sprite, just drag it back to the little scroll, the options. And you're going to want to click where the uh, fox and apple are. You're going to want to click on the fox. Just and it should make a little box around it. So that means that you. So you got it. Yeah. All right. So um, now what you're gonna want to do is we're gonna use a command that pretty much says uh, if you're touching the apple, you win. All right. So you're gonna want to use the when flag clicked and you're going to drag it to your uh, what's it called? Your sort of empty space right here. Don't attach it to anything yet. So you guys got that now? Yes. Alright. So what you're going to want to do now is find the block in control 
That's the yellow one. You're going to want to find the block that says wait until. should be right around here. Wait until. And you're going to want to drag that and put it right under the, the when clicked button. You guys got it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so now you're going to want to go to the light blue box and go to sensing. So while you guys are doing that, I'm going to tell you right now we're going to make it say that um, when, when your flag is clicked, it has to wait until your first sprite is touching your second sprite and when it's touching the second sprite, that means it's going to say that you win the game and it's going to restart the game because you beat it. So um, now that you guys are all here, um, you're going to go to the top one in the light blue that should say touching blank. And you're going to want to drag that to a little space and wait until... Um, so one of the questions you guys had was what if they can't select another sprite? Well, down here at the bottom... Are you listening, Canyon? This is you. Right here at the bottom, it should have uh, two different sort of pictures of your sprites. And you're just going to want to click on the one that you want to be in. So you want to be on your first sprite that you created. Okay, but it will not let him select a sprite from the sprite library. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's, um, let me pull up something real quick. Um, can you, well, hang on. Um, is it, okay, well, I was going to say screen share, but that wouldn't work because it's not on this computer. Um, okay, so... When he goes to the Bright Library, you're saying that he can't click on one to add? Right. You if, just you double click it. Try double clicking. Try double clicking, Kaden. Yeah, okay. No, it's not letting him highlight anything. It's almost like it's frozen in the library, but the rest of it's okay. I mean, like, he can move commands and things, but it's just not letting him choose another sprite. Do I need to close out and restart him? Maybe save it. Yeah, I was going to say, do do a file, save as, and then um, just exit out of it and open it back up. Okay, we will try that. Okay. Do you want us to wait? No, you're okay. You can go ahead. Okay. All right. <laughs> So everybody has uh, their first and second sprites, and they have what's on my screen right now, right? Yes. Okay, that's good. So um, now what you're going to want to do is there should be a little triangle in the uh, touching, the light blue touching. So you're going to want to click on that triangle, and it should have uh, it should have three sort of lines of words. You're going to want to click on the bottom word, and it should be the name of your second sprite. So in my case, it's Apple. So you're going to want to click on the bottom line of the light blue. So it should end up with Wait until touching, and then your the name of your second sprite. Everybody has that. Yes. Um. All right. So now, what we're gonna do is you're gonna go back to the brown events tab, and um, click on and there's. Really, right next to the bottom, there should be something that says broadcast message one. So 
Ne? So you're gonna want to uh, drag broadcast one and put it right under the wait until touching whatever your second sprite is. Broadcast message one. That's all. Not the broadcast message and wait. Broadcast message and that's all. Broadcast. So when you have that, uh, you're going to want to click on the black arrow that's right next to message one and click on new message. And it should pop up with this little box that says message name. And in that box, you're going to want to type in you. So you win. And that's pretty much going to tell the game that you beat the game, and it's going to end it and send you back to where you're supposed to be. All right, it looks like we have it. All right. So click OK, and it should change what it used to say, message one to you in. So when you're done with that, that means that when you're touching an apple, it just sends a message to the computer saying that you beat the game, and then we have to tell the computer what to do when you beat the game. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, So right now, you're going to go to, um, well, actually, you're, you're not you're going to stay in the brown sort of tabs, and you're going to go to when I receive message one. So you're going to drag that onto your space, your blank space. So when I receive message one. Is that the same thing that, uh, like, if it says, when I receive, you win? It should say, when I receive, message one, and that's it. And then you can go to the black arrow and make it say, you win. So it says, when I receive, you win. Okay, ours, ours was already in there. It didn't say, like, message one, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So, um... Now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want it. You're gonna want to make it say. You're gonna go to sound, and um, when it's on sound, you go to the top one and it says play sound meow or whatever your sound says. So you're gonna drag it. It's in the pink tab. So you're gonna drag it and put it under. When I receive, you win. Play sound. No, uh, 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 I know that's funny, but shh. So now what you're going to want to do to test out your game right now is uh, click the green flag and then press space bar a few times until you touch the apple and see what happens. Okay, press the space bar. Can you do that one more time, Sebastian? They're all excited about the sound. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, with your main sprite, you're going to want to click the green flag and then press space bar until you touch the apple. So uh, let me click the green flag and it's the sound. Pretty cool. So the meow or whatever sound that you have is going to pretty much signify that you won the game. 
and uh, then we can just build off of that. So uh, to get your main sprite back to the beginning, you just drag it back to the left-hand side of the, the screen. <coughs> Alright, so do you guys got that? No. Alright. Okay, if you guys are having trouble with your sound, double check and make sure the speakers are on. Like if you check down in the bottom right hand corner, the little speaker. Um, make sure that that's on, okay, and that your volume is up. Because sometimes that can be muted, and that might cause you some problems if you're having trouble hearing your sound. Yeah. No, mine's Okay, they're having to click the green flag when their first sprite is on their second sprite. Should they oh. do that? Alright, so just click the stop sign then. Okay, click the stop sign. And drag your first sprite to the left-hand side of the screen to where he was originally at. So does everybody have that? Yes. No. You All right, so everybody has that? Yeah. All right, so now um, you're going to want to sort of make it more easy for yourself and um, go, go to the motion, the blue motion tab at the top of the screen. All right, so now that you're in motion, you're going to want to click on the go to X and then a number and then Y a number. So it should be right around here. You're going to want to drag that and put it under the uh, play sound meow. Or, yeah. So go to X, blank, Y, blank. There should be numbers there, though. And connect it to the place out. Alright. So, uh, once you guys have that, Um, whenever, just press the green flag, and whenever you press the space bar and touch the apple, it should sort of teleport you back to where you're supposed to be. So, what I'm going to do, after, you have to click the green flag, and you press space to get to the other side. Oh. When you press space to get to the other side, it should sort of teleport you back. And just keep clicking the green flag whenever you get teleported back. Alright. 
So, uh, do you guys have all that done now? Yes! So, go and click the red stop sign at the top of your screen. And when you have that done, go to where it shows the two pictures of your sprites. And it should there should be a blank white rectangle that says stage one backdrop. So, right around here. You're going to want to click on it. And it should bring a whole other screen up. Now, uh, you're where it has all the tabs, you're going to want to go above those tabs to where it says scripts, backdrops, and sounds. You're going to want to click on backdrops. So go ahead and click on backdrops. <coughs> Are we doing over there, Mission Alt? Uh, we're good. I'm just working with a couple of students that's having trouble, but we're good. The rest of Okay. So, um, where it's when you're on the backdrop screen up right here, <coughs> should say new backdrop. So you're gonna want to click on the little uh, picture of mountains right here. It says choose backdrop from library. That's where we want to click. Looks like they're already there. So now you can just pick any backdrop you want. Don't take too long, but just pick any one you want. No. And that's that's gonna be sort of the that's gonna be the background for your whole. Okay. So uh, just pick any backdrop you want. That's just gonna be what they're going on. What do you guys think about that, huh? Awesome! <laughs> oh, Sebastian's on the moon. So now what you're going to want to do is uh, go back to where you clicked before and click on your first sprite right here. <coughs> so, when, so finish choosing your backdrop. All right. So uh, click on the little picture of your fox down here, or not your fox, your main sprite right here. And when you're there, it should come up with a little picture of a fox. You're going to want to ignore that and go up to here where it says at the top of the screen, scripts, costumes, and sounds. You're going to want to click on the, the little tab that says scripts and it should take you back to the normal screen that you're supposed to be on and uh, I think now that you have your backgrounds chosen and you have your characters moving I think you have your game done so well just about yeah well yeah almost done so uh, what you're gonna want to do is just to test it out one more time Click the green flag at the top of your screen. Press the space bar and try to get your object. And every time you get teleported back, just click the green flag again and you can play it as, as much as you want. So just keep going as many times as you want. Okay, guys, it is 4.30, so what we're going to do is give a big round of applause for Sebastian and his teaching today. So give him a shout-out. Ready? Clap. Clap for Sebastian. Yay, Sebastian. Okay, now, listen, we are going to, this is not the end. We are not done. I know we have our little middle part we still need to add, but since it is 4.30, we're going to go ahead and stop for today. So we want to show you how to save. So in the top left-hand corner where you see Scratch, we want to click File and Save. Okay? Now, this is the fun part. This is where you get to name your game something really cool, okay? Don't let me down. Something really cool. Sebastian's <laughs> awesome game. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you already said
My kiddos, if you can click documents over here, you can see where under libraries. Or you can say my first game. All right, Miss Chanel, are you there? Yes, sorry. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop for today. So we will let you guys know when round two is going to be so we can finish up our game. But you guys did a really awesome awesome job. So Sebastian and I are going to clap for you guys. Yay! Good job, guys. Thank you so much, Sebastian. You did an absolutely fabulous job. Thanks. Very excited. And thanks, Ms. Whitlow, for putting all this together. All right.